Hi, I'm Mike Lester. I want to welcome you guys here today to the SDSU Mechanical Engineering Machine Shop. And uh, so we're going to do a little guided tour of all the different equipment that we have in here that you guys are going to be able to be exposed to uh, in a short time. So over here on my left is uh, we have two VF2YT Haas milling machines. And uh, I want to say these are some pretty awesome pieces of equipment. And so what they, you know, they're three axis and we can put our materials in there. We can set our offsets. You can download your file and it will create you a part. So there is a lot of work goes into setting this up, but it's definitely worth it for parts that have a lot of details a lot of machining and especially if you have to do duplicates you can put it in there you once you get it all set up you can do the duplicates very easily and the most the best part about this machine all the mess stays inside these doors so the machine won't run without the, with the doors open so it all stays in here we can flood cool with these machines and so it really offers us a lot of benefits uh, over our manual mills <clears throat> So which I'll show you in a minute. Um, so primarily these take NC files, which you're gonna have to download and create toolpath files from either like Mastercam or uh, HSM Works. Um, there's a whole host of them out there. Uh, Fusion 360 is a good one. A lot of people are using that. And uh, you use those, use those programs to create your toolpaths and then you're going to take a thumb drive and you're going to load it in the machine and we'll show you uh, at a later date and you're going to watch some videos from Haas, uh, uh, professionally made uh, guys that really know what they're doing on these things to do all the very detailed specifics on how to run these pieces of equipment. So these are awesome machines. We've had them for a number of years. Uh, we've made thousands of really amazing parts on them um, and so they'll do exactly what you want done. And over here, we've got all of our different uh, blocks and hold downs and tool holders and items to set your uh, materials down. And whenever you're setting up, whether in the Haas or in our Prototracks, the key issue is always locking your part down somehow so it can't come loose or vibrate. It's got to be super rigid. So these are the items that we use for doing all that. And over here, we have all of our, uh, most all of our power tools are here, and these guys are going to get some close-ups of them. So we've pretty much got all the necessary hand tools that we need for doing all this work and some more wrenches and all this stuff. And then we've got lots more tools inside those drawers over there. So over here, we have our prototracks. So these are not just manual mills. These are full three-axis machines. They can be operated fully by the hand wheels, okay, as much as we want. We can operate them through conversational programming, which we can put in here. And we can also download toolpath files just like we do on the, on the Haases. We can put a thumb drive in here, download the file, and create your part doing it that way. So what's the real big difference between these and the Haases? Well, some of the biggest differences are that these are not enclosed, so they're open, so we can put really large things on them. And as long as we can get the machine to go all the way around your part, or we have to take your part off and move it. One of the bigger differences is that over there on the hauses, those, um, you know, keep all the mess inside. These allow all the mess to come outside, okay? So we end up with a great big mess here. And I want to make sure that you guys realize we have some really important tools here these are technological advances to some of you, and they're called brooms and dustpans and all this stuff. I keep these over here because this is the area that really gets the biggest mess, okay? So hopefully you guys will take, uh, take uh, care to use some of those things and keep the place clean, which is always a challenge, okay? But I need your help to do that. Um, but these are awesome machines to work on. They're very friendly. This is gonna be the first milling machine you're gonna do before you get on the hauses, okay? So this is where you can actually very simply uh, program these, or you can just manually cut with the hand wheels, uh, pure and simply. So, um, okay, so moving on, we've got 
We've got our water jet back here. And I um, want to say the water jet is one of the more favorite machines to use here in the shop. So the water jet works by super high pressure water, 50,000 PSI. Okay, and as a matter of comparison, the water pressure in, at your house is probably around 40 or 50 PSI. So it will, it will chop through stainless steel an inch and a half thick. Okay, it cuts through glass, it cuts through stone, it cuts through all the metals, um, ceramics, composites, wood, foam, you name it, it will cut through it. The way it works is this pump over here generates uh, all this water pressure and it puts it through this little tiny line right here which has only got a, uh, a bore in it of an eighth of an inch and it comes out through this nozzle here which is quite fragile actually and along with the water coming out here there is sand that is uh, regulated through this nozzle hose here and and matches up with the water and comes out the nozzle and um, so when that water pressure hits and then the sand comes through, it just immediately um, bores right through the material and then it starts to cut uh, along whatever geometry you've created. And here's just a real simple piece of geometry right here. This is gonna be for the ME340 class. You guys are gonna have to cut this. And this is about as simple a geometry as we ever get right here. So that's pretty much um, what this is all about. Um, so there is no limit to all the different kinds of geometry that you can cut here on this thing. We do, it doesn't do engraving, but it, it always cuts all the way through whatever it is that you want to cut through. So there's no pocketing or, nest, or engraving being done with this machine. So it always wants to cut all the way through, okay? So, um, you know, we do round shapes, we do holes, we do all kinds of pretty good stuff. And it's relatively accurate. Um, you know, you can pretty much guarantee you're going to be in the five to ten thousandths range. Now, when we need to hit higher accuracy, we can make adjustments and we can and we can nail it pretty well within a couple thousandths. Um, but it can leave some rough edges. So aluminum, all these different materials that we like to use, they kind of react differently with the sand. And so we try to make adjustments to give you nice clean parts. And a lot of times we'll go through and do secondary operations after we've cut the parts off to clean them up, make them really perfect, and, um, and get them to right where you need them to go. So we'll take parts off of here, we'll take them over the proto track, and we'll, we might ream the holes. Uh, we might run a cutter around some areas just to take the lines off and whatever we gotta do. So that all depends on you, all right? Now, Along with this machine, uh, most of the goods that get put on here are sheet metal. So uh, along with sheet metal comes all kinds of issues, uh, safety-wise, and I wanna explain just a couple things. So it's a really good idea to use, wear gloves when you're handling sheet metal. So inevitably, there are a lot of sharp burrs on sheet metal, sharp edges, and if you're handling big sheets, it's really easy to cut your hands up. So we've not had any really big accidents here, but people nick themselves up quite a bit. So I think having a pair of gloves is a really good idea, okay? Um, especially if you're handling big sheets. If you're handling small stuff, eh, not such a big deal. But when you pull parts off of here, there's always gonna be the bottom side is always gonna have burrs on it. Really teeny tiny fine burrs or microscopic. You can feel them. But if you run your finger across that burr, it's gonna, it's gonna, you're gonna bleed, I guarantee it. So another item here that you need when you're working on this is these guys right here, okay? You're gonna wanna wear these. This thing is really loud. It puts out a lot of decibels and it's a good idea to have, the, have these on here. We also have earplugs. If you'd rather have just throw away earplugs, we've got those as well. Um, so those are the big safety issues here and um, Whenever, whenever you come in the shop, you need to use machines, any of these machines, uh, they're already gonna be on, so I'm not gonna talk to you guys or really worry you guys about how to turn these machines on. You're gonna come in, we're gonna help you uh, get started, make sure everything's going on the right, right, right roll. All right, so moving back some more, we've got a few more things here. Uh, this is a good workbench here for doing steel. If you gotta bang on something, this is the place to do it, right? 
You know, people love to bang on the anvil, use the, use the vise a lot for uh, doing uh, um, cutoffs with the cutoff wheel. I use these weights on the water jet all the time to hold things down so they don't move around. Uh, I've got a tool post grinder here, a really fine one. Um, we do a little bit of tool grinding, but not a whole lot. Uh, we touch up things occasionally when we need to. And then behind me here is our latest addition to the shop. This is our Haas CNC lathe, uh, the TL1. And this thing is awesome, okay? So um, it's quite new. We've had it only about a month and I've run it a whole bunch of times now. I'm starting to get the hang of it and I got a lot to learn, I guarantee it. But you're gonna, you're gonna have um, some opportunities to operate this thing in the future, uh, hopefully sooner than later. <clears throat> so the, I, the way that this, uh, we, we can do a little bit of hand work on this thing for certain things, but primarily we're gonna use this program that it has embedded in here, it's called the VPS, vi a Visual Programming System. And uh, it's pretty cool, it's pretty simple to use, and it'll, it'll automate the different moves that you're trying to make in the lathe when you put materials in there and set it up right. So it's, there's some programming there, and you can do a lot of programming. You can do toolpath programs that could be downloaded to this and operate the lathe. So as you get more and more advanced doing it, that's how that's gonna work. Okay, also one of our <clears throat> newer pieces of equipment is this awesome Rogue Fabricator. So this is um, for bending tube. And uh, if you're trying to build uh, lightweight frames and with hollow tube or even solid bar, this thing can do the job. So this thing is really amazing. Thank you Rogue for helping us get this. Uh, you guys have built an amazing product. Our um, Baja and AER teams have already been swooning all over this thing. Um, practicing and actually making some really good bends. We also have uh, inside mandrels for doing um, uh, very thin wall tubing and so it works out pretty good and we're just getting used to it. We also have this finger break here. Um, works quite well. Uh, we can put um, 14 gauge material in there in most cases, uh, softer stuff anyway, and, uh, and we can get some good bends with that. So, and then over here, we have our wonderful hydraulic press. It's a platen press. So these platens here can heat up to 350 degrees F. Uh, they come together with force of about um, 50 tons of force. And uh, the area is two foot by two foot. So we control it all right here. I can control the heaters. Uh, we can do ramping up and down on this thing. It's all electronically controlled. It's pretty massive. It's uh, super old. It works super good. We're really happy to have this guy. Okay, and then right out here is our newly established welding area. Okay, and we have a MIG welder all set up here, ready to go for our ME340 class. And uh, we're really happy that we've got a designated area to try and do some welding. Uh, we're gonna help you guys with it. Um, Jack is going to be um, giving you guys some lessons on, on running this guy and you'll see some videos of him and possibly some other videos too that we'll add in there. It's always fun. Welding is kind of an interesting thing and you know it's enjoyable when you get into it and you can actually create some really amazing stuff. So over here we've got some sanding equipment. Uh, we've got a cold saw here. Uh, this is for operating at a real low RPM. Okay, so when you put your material in these clamps here, you're going to pull this down gently, carefully. You're going to turn this on. Fluid's going to be coming out of this thing, and you're going to just pull this guy right on through until you've got your cut made. It's pretty astonishing how that lo real low speed can just slice through thick pieces of steel and aluminum. So we like doing that. And then over here, uh, we've had this bandsaw for a while. Uh, we can cut pieces up to 13 inches by 13 inches in here. Uh, it's pretty, pretty good size. Um, there are some things to be careful about. You know, you've got a blade that's moving, it's exposed. And you know, sometimes we have our hands too close to some of these things. We just gotta be aware that when blades are moving, 
and tools are rotating that you got to keep your hands away from them. But when we turn this thing on, you know, everything starts moving and um, we can turn the feed rate up and make the thing move fast or we can turn it down slow if we're cutting harder materials. And again, about the hardened materials, make sure that you're not trying to cut hardened materials in there. Okay, you can always check how hard a material is by taking a file to it as long as it's a good sharp file. And if it just slips across your material without grabbing it, you know it's pretty hard, okay? Do, please do not run hardened materials uh, in any of our saw components, okay? So if we need to cut hardened material, we're gonna do it on the water jet or we're gonna do it with a cutoff wheel, uh, a grinding one. Some of the safety issues that go on in the shop. So there's a few things I want you to always, always do when you come in here and you're gonna have, uh, I want you to always have your feet covered Okay, so no sandals in here. So if you come in here with sandals, uh, if, you get, if you do get past the door, I'm gonna probably ask you to go find some shoes to wear somewhere, okay? But, um, so I expect you to always have shoes on your feet. I want your toes covered. And um, I want us to always be wearing safety glasses in here. So there's not much of anything you can do in here without wearing safety glasses. Okay, so it's super important. And then for the hearing protection, talked about that a little bit um, with the water jet. But you know, when you're using grinders and anything with really high RPM cutting, uh, it's gonna make a loud pitch. Your decibels are gonna go out the roof. You really should have ear protection. You can either use the squeeze plugs, which are pretty effective, or you're going to use the ear muffs, okay? So which we have. So, and uh, we've got lots more uh, face shields. Um, use them and take advantage of them. Now, as far as the safety glasses go, uh, it's a really good idea if you guys get your own safety glasses, okay? Have your own pair, keep them in your backpack, that way when you come in, you've got a pair. I may not always have a bunch of extra safety glasses, and I'm really not planning to buy so many that I supply everybody with the five or six or seven that they really need because they take them, they don't bring them back, and they come back and they want more, and da 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 That just goes on and on and on. I can't keep up with that, sorry. So try to get your own, but I have them here for those, I, for those times when you do need them. So anyway, I really enjoyed speaking to you today, and I'm going to enjoy a lot more when I get to see you guys here working, and we'll be able to discuss in detail what your projects are. So thanks a lot. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.